Hey guys, I'm bringing you the first of my coverage of some structure PvP specs in Guild Wars 2. This will be a condition damage based elementalist build focusing around the scepter main hand and dagger offhand. Now, by a condition damage spec, I mean that you'll be doing most of your damage through d damage over time effects like burning effects that you have in your fire attunement and bleeding effects that you have over in your earth attunement. Now, you'll still be using all of the various attunements quite often because, you know, all of them have some necessary utility that you need and they provide some potent boons. Now, I focus my stats on condition damage with some precision to keep the crit rate for extra proc bleeds. I also look for what I felt was enough vitality and toughness for myself so that I could be very durable without losing too much of my offensive capability. Okay, so we just took this space over here and I noticed that one of the blue team members actually just came back from his respawn, so I actually screwed up a little bit of a red lightning there, but it's okay, I end up starting to attack him and as I'm attacking him I notice that the rest of the blue team spawned. And so I need to get away. So this is where the spec starts to come in really handy because I have these cantrips, so I use Cleansing Fire, the my first utility spell, to remove all the conditions that were on me and then I use Lightning Flash to teleport away. And then flanked around behind them and started using my earth uh, auto attack to start applying some bleeds. And I'm basically trying to remove pressure from my uh, other elementalist ally over here. He's under a lot of heavy fire and I want to help him out. Now uh, I'm trying to revive him but obviously with all these enemies around it's a problem so I just go ahead and I knock him, one of them away. And so I keep trying to revive him but then he uses mist form here and you can't revive him while he's in mist form, so I go over here, I start to revive him again, and then I notice that they're doing it. I try to actually go to Earth Attunement right there to knock them back again, but the cooldown on my knockback had like a second left, so that was too bad. He ended up going down because the Mesmer there had a really clutch knockback. Anyway, I managed to escape again with the cantrips, and I come back up here and I summon my Fire Elemental before healing myself up. And the fire elemental is actually like really powerful. It's most damaging of the uh, elite uh, elementals, but it, it is a little bit squishy. If they actually manage to target it, then it would probably go down pretty fast. But you can see here that it's actually managing to keep them a little bit busy. It's uh, attacking them, and I managed to get that ranger down while all that was happening. Now, here at this point, we sort of noticed that you know we're being three capped and. As, even though we have a bit of a lead, we want to start getting those bases back, so I decide that since I'm a pretty durable person, I'm going to try to uh, hold off their team while we take the mine and hopefully the henge. Now, I'm fighting this warrior here, and he's doing a pretty good job of putting on the hurt on me, and then he uses his bola right here, and that's going to hold me still. So I just use my mist form and I have vulnerability the rest of his attacks. Use cleansing fire to drop the bola and uh, burn him, and then I can go ahead and start to DPS him down. I actually managed to almost get him here. I, I ride the lightning to get up to him, updraft, knock him down, and then start to burst him down. But uh, unfortunately, none of those attacks crit, and I didn't manage to actually get him down. I got a little bit greedy there afterward, and I, tr I tried to go in for the kill, but you know, four against one, it's a little bit hard. Just, just a little bit hard. Now, the scepter is actually a mid-range weapon usually, so you'd expect that you'd probably want to keep some range, and that's the case a lot of the time, but with this kind of spec, with all, all the toughness and vitality that I've added on, I can actually just really get into the thick of it. So I see here that one of my allies has actually gone down, so I just go ahead and I ride the lightning and jump straight right in. That actually goes ahead and downs one of the guardians there that was attacking him. I go ahead and throw out another knockdown, and then I go for the kill on this one. Now, I didn't go for the revive because when I kill this guy, look, it just rallies my ally right there. So effectively the same thing, and this guarantees that one of the enemies goes down. Now, if you notice there, I actually got down to 1000 health, and you can see the, the staying power and recovery that this build has. I was able to just, you know, quickly use a cantrip and my mist form, and since you can actually use your heal while you're in mist form, I was able to easily get away and recover. Now, at this point, I'm you know, trying to kill this thief, and I, I summon my Ice Elemental. Now, the, the Ice Elemental is probably the uh, second most powerful of the Elementals in terms of damage, but I'd say that overall it's probably the most useful. 
Uh, now, it does less damage than the Fire Elemental, sure, but it has a heal that heals for about 6,000 health, and it can also chill enemies, and it can uh, do some pretty decent uh, AoE damage as well. So I like it a lot. Uh, at that point, you know, I killed a thief, but then the, the that warrior came and was attacking me. So I was able to, again, use my cantrips to get away and use red lightning, and as you can see, I built up quite a lead ahead of them. So in this clip here, you'll notice that I actually changed my healing utility spell out uh, from the Glyph of Elemental Harmony to the Signet Heal. And the reason for that is because my guildy here, Tagram, is actually the one that I'm beating on this Glyph. Uh, we were both playing variants of this Elemental Condition Damage build at this point, and he noticed that the Condition Damage spells, the, the auto attacks for the uh, Earth, Air, and Water uh, attunements, since they uh, attack multiple times, they were actually proccing multiple heals, so uh, all of these little 170s that you see, those are actually uh, multiple, usually at three heals per auto attack. And so that's some pretty significant passive healing, I thought I'd give it a try. You know, in retrospect, I think that I actually did prefer the Glyph Elemental Harmony anyway. Uh, the Signet Heal does have a pretty good upfront heal, but the cooldown is much longer. It has a 40 second base cooldown versus the Glyph Elemental Harmony's 20 second base cooldown. So you actually end up with a little bit less healing, and the Glyph Elemental Harmony has some pretty significant utility because it gives you that boon. And this is sort of like the specialty of Guild Wars 2, that you can really adapt your build to your playstyle. You can decide, okay, well, I'd like to, you know, have a little bit more passive abilities going on, or I'd rather have more active abilities that give me buffs. I actually did end up with a build that was more similar to what Togrim ended up with, where I, I incorporated more signets into my build and I then traded to improve them. Right now, I actually just plopped on that heal instead of uh, putting any traits on it, so it's, it's not the most effective build. Now, uh, in general though, this Condition Damage Elementals build is uh, a great build for beginning Elementals players. By that, I mean that you know it, it gives you so much ability to, to free up your mental power to focus on positioning. Uh, most of the damage that you're going to be dealing is from your auto attacks, proccing various burning or bleed effects. And as a result, you can really focus on, okay, when do I need to change attunements? When do I need to use my utilities? When, you know, do I need to uh, move around, you know, paying attention to your positioning? Now, uh, I do feel like the Elementalist takes a little bit more skill to do well with than, say, Warrior or various other classes. I'm sure that there's specs where you require more, for, uh, more skill for every class, but and this is probably one of the most approachable elemental specs. And I found it very easy to, you know, get used to the elementalist mechanics with it. Eventually, I, I did uh, play around with some other elementalist uh, specs, and I think that I do prefer personally uh, some of the staff builds that I ended up trying later. But you know, this was a great start, so uh, I, I do recommend it. And I, I think I would still play with this from time to time, just because of uh, the abilities that this has that some of the other specs don't have. Now, in terms of strengths and weaknesses of this spec. You know, uh, obviously one of the major strengths is just our ability to be very tanky in this. So, I, I mean, I don't have a ton of health in the way that I build this, but I have enough health and an, uh, enough recovery cooldowns that I can pretty much get away from almost anything uh, reasonable. Uh, I have an amazing condition damage removal. I can remove all kinds of conditions uh, just by rolling. I can remove conditions. I have cleansing fire, that, which removes three conditions. I have Obviously, the heal in the water attunement can remove conditions, so there's all kinds of uh, condition removals. Oh, and mo probably most importantly, in, in fire attunement, the phoenix will remove all of your conditions when you use it. So you're pretty much able to, to move around freely without having to worry about too much control. But as far as weaknesses go, uh, this build doesn't really have a good answer to sustain ranged damage. You, you really need to use line of sight. If you'll notice earlier in, on this battle, this thief was actually shooting me with his short bow, and I was doing much worse than when they switched to double dagger because uh, this build has a lot of good control in melee range with the, the various knockbacks and everything. If they had actually just kept attacking me from range, it, it would have been a lot rougher. One of the other thieves I was fighting actually did realize that eventually, and 
uh, would just switch him double daggers to shortbow and, and, and actually kite me, even though I'm a range class. It was an interesting experience. Probably the most important thing that I could tell you is that you should play around with the spec and uh, change some of the utilities around. And see what really works for you, you know, how much survivability do you need, how much can you sub out, can I switch out this lightning flash ability for like a signet of earth and then get some offensive utility that can still control my opponents and I can use that to my advantage. Thanks for watching this video. For a more detailed write up on the build, check out my blog at topvp.wordpress.com. If you like this content, please let me know and follow me as I have a lot more Guild Wars 2 content coming up. Now, I do value your feedback, so let me know in the comments what you want to see more of. You can expect more guides on mechanics, more builds, and general musings on the game. Thanks, and have a great day.